Hi, everyone. It is March 3rd, 2021. I'm a little concerned that whole areas can be flooded out and it takes an awful lot of time to try to find those areas. Okay, South Carolina, um, Socrates, South Carolina. Homes are still sitting underwater um, but how is it that, based on my research of just general, uh, a general search of flooding, South Carolina did not come up. It only came up with one drone aerial footage of Conway. And I just assumed that that was, I think it was two years ago, Conway got hit with massive flooding because of a hurricane. So after I read um, and saw the videos that I posted last night, but after I read this comment underneath that video I posted last night, uh, our friend's place in South Carolina is now surrounded by water for the fourth time in five years. No one can get in or out but by boat. The river finally crested Sunday and is still at major flood stage. We have become accustomed to roads being washed out, closed, or flooded. The National Guard milling about, helicopters flying overhead. New normal. It's the new normal. Oh, man. Surreal. Yeah, it is surreal. Well, uh, there's a reason for all of this. You know, this is what I found after spending way too much time just on one particular area of South Carolina. But get ready for a whole lot of flooding all over the country because the rains, the snow, the melting, the temperatures going up, down, up, down, up, down. All right, more flooding is coming to a whole lot of people. I can't stand this. When you know that this is engineered, when you know that they are deliberately destroying people's lives that do not deserve it, and for all of you who think because people have refused to wake up, they do deserve it, what happens when it happens to you? You don't deserve it, but everybody else who just isn't awake, they deserve it. Nobody deserves what is taking place. No one deserves to have their life destroyed by others. No one deserves it. So, yeah, more rain to fall on already soggy South Carolina. So more flooding to come. Uh, Rosewood Drive flooding in Socrates. No, I honestly, ma'am... <laughs> so, if you're new to this reality that we have been living for a long time. And you may not know that this is deliberate and they sure do want a whole lot of people out of their homes, their homes on the coastal lines of the entire United States. So this is on the coastal area of South Carolina, but you know, eight floods, six years, one home, Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach had quite a lot of flooding as well. And the family is exhausted by it all. Of course you are. Mike and Carolyn Moore purchased their waterfront home along the inter intra-coastal waterway, 2004, a present from husband to wife, it wasn't yet designated a flood zone, nor was flood insurance required. 
So they traded a Myrtle Beach beachfront property for the serene waterways of Socrates, with their backyard gently touching one of the Grand Strand's most popular bodies of water, complete with a renovated dock with a fan to keep the mosquitoes away. Fast forward 17 years. That same body of water has delivered a slew of costly gut punches to the tune of eight flood events in six years. So, there's so much going on. And I I just, I have to wonder about everything that we don't know that is taking place. Mark stared at more than three feet of water already sitting in the one-bedroom apartment along the bottom level of their home. Yeah. Great. Great. Here along the Intracoastal Waterway, it's currently at 18.1 feet. Now, residents here say they love living along the waterway, but not when the waterway comes into their homes. You can come in overnight like that. Miriam Miles has lived on Folly Road for 30 years, but not in the same home. This is the third house we've built, and no matter where we build or how high we build, the flood follows us. Miles says she's seen Hurricane Floyd come through in 1999, rebuilt thinking that'd be it. Then it started happening again with another hurricane. And then another flood and another. And it has continually got worse. Stockiest is where our yard is the ends. She says even with how much she loves living here. We may stay here or we may sell. We're just to the point we can't keep continue to do this. As beautiful as it is, we just can't continue. And down the waterway, one resident is doing just that. Tony, who didn't want to be interviewed, is moving him and his family out after dealing with water in his home too many times to count. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be when it's not flooding. But then sometimes we flood three or four times a year, and it just takes all the joy away from it. Yes, others can destroy joy in others. Well, you know, I have, let me see what else. Volunteer helps ease the pain of flooding in South Carolina. God. In Socrates, South Carolina is struggling with severe flooding throughout the community, making it nearly impossible to drive Sacristy is just outside of Myrtle Beach, and as you can see, cars are nearly underwater. But one man is taking it upon himself to make sure the community gets what they need. Using his boat, he floats around collecting orders and delivering the life-saving items. There's been plenty of people that they're like, hey, can I give you some money? I'm like, no, I don't want money. I'm like, you've got enough to deal with. And Rush says he doesn't live there, but he knew he was able to help so when he heard the news, he jumped into action. Well, because- and that's the way, you know, people are actually going to survive this. Um, here, a man in Myrtle Beach, and he is showing all of the flooding uh, with a drone, the homes that are flooded out, the roads that are closed. Um, okay, well... Yeah. I want you to listen to this. This is um Oh my god. Deborah Tavares. Wow. Oh, that was that was difficult to retrieve. Deborah Tavares talking about the artificially created flooding along the coastlines. This is a deliberate 
a deliberate flooding because they want you gone. And what you heard, the man living in Socrates, he's moving out. The others who are saying, we can't do this anymore. It's exhausting. We're probably going to put our homes up for sale. That's exactly what they want. And you know what? Putting those homes up for sale, if you have been flooded out continually, not a whole lot of people want to buy, and you are sure not going to recover what you put into that home. And all of it is deliberate. Doesn't that just piss you off? A sharing of climate change impacts across society. So let's talk about sea level rise and let's talk about storm surge and how this is all being manipulated. And uh, we're going to go over that. Uh, we, we need to understand that sea level rise is being created artificially. And we're going to uh, read uh, how we've discovered this to you, where we found this, and what uh, you need to know about this fact of our reality. Uh, this, uh, this is not part of the military document that you're going to hear me refer to uh, in a minute, but this came out of the NASA war plan that is on StopTheCrime.net from page 59. And uh, while the NASA war plan, plan was presented as a PowerPoint a few months before 9-11, um, we've spent many hours uh, with many, many whistleblowers on going through this plan. And I'm going to read to you right now what has happened and what they're doing and what they're using. It's called the Blast Wave Accelerator. And again, it is discussed in the NASA war document on Stop the Crime. And it is likely one of the aspects that's being deployed to increase the new modeling for higher sea levels, the creation of higher waves, and the daily increased heavier lapping of the waves against all of the coastal seashores that uh, cause increased erosion and is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's coastal sea shores. The blast wave accelerator is an older technology but it's part of causing the coastal seashore erosion called sea level rise. We're going to talk about the newer technology in a moment, but I'm going to discuss in detail how the blast wave accelerator came about. Again, you can find it on page 59 of the NASA war plan and on stopthecrime.net. They tell us on page 59 that the blast wave accelerator is global precision strike on the cheap, no barrel, excellent stealth, no plume, being worked at Albert, uh, Aberdeen and the NASA uh, MSFC for lofting of fuel and nanosats. And here's what the blast wave accelerator was created to do. In 1944, the U.S. military worked with the New Zealand government and developed a devastating tsunami bomb to send, and I find this interesting, to send a 33-foot wave crashing into Japan's coast designed to destroy coastal cities of, the, of Japan, a top-secret tsunami bomb from World War II. This was the planned backup weapon if Fat Boy and Little Boy, the code names for the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan in World War II, had failed to detonate. So had those bombs failed to detonate, they were going to use this blast wave accelerator. The code name is Project SEAL, S-E-A-L. You can look it up. Codename Project SEAL is a weapon of mass destruction, and it relied on a series of 10 large offshore blasts and were tested off the coast of New Caledonia at the time and Auckland. 
now being worked on as the blast wave accelerator. So what you're going to hear me say next is as diabolical as what you're going to hear me say. The military uh, in all branches has signed on to the mission of fighting against climate change, which is a fraud. They are in the process, as we speak, of relocating, relocating all, all low-lying military operations worldwide to higher ground. Because they know that sea level rise and um, the other aspects of the erosion on the coastlines is being deliberately waged upon us. This is war. This is absolutely war. Now, if you go to StopTheCrime.net and you go to email blast out, you're going to uh, read some of what you're going to hear me say, and you're going to be able to link up to the document that I'm going to be going over for the remainder of this broadcast. And this is a request to get this uh, information out far and wide. What we need to understand is how all of this has happened, and much of it has happened, by policies that have been conceived through consensus, consensus, and insidiously implemented without the public's knowledge and informed consent based upon bogus consensus science. Now, why am I talking about consensus? Because the military document called Military Expert Panel Report, Sea Level Rise in the U.S. Military's Mission, talks about how the entire document was based on consensus. So what is a consensus? Well, the definition of consensus depends on participants having shared values and goals and on having a broad agreement on specific issues and overall direction. Consensus implies that everyone accepts and supports the decision and understands the reasons for making those decisions. And you're going to hear often about advisory meetings. These are all consensus-based. They're facilitated by trained and manipulated trained leaders that create the illusion that your ideas are being crafted into policies for your community, and they are not. Many of you have heard through the years the discussion about the Delphi technique, which is a format of manipulation and control and promotes the consensus plot. What is this? It's tightly monitored control of citizens in attendance in the manipulation necessary to create the illusion that we the people are creating these policies. Again, we are not. Now, I've covered many, many times about the climate action plans and the resilient plans. Again, I can't underscore enough for all of you to listen to some of the YouTubes. Type in Deborah Tavares, climate action plans. Again, go to stopthecrime.net to our climate action plan page. But more importantly, look at your climate action plan in your community because they've adopted it. And that is easily done. All you have to do is put in a search bar the name of your county, state, climate action plan, and guarantee something will come up. Unless, of course, you happen to live in an area where they're literally going to take out everyone. Everyone. This is all deliberate. We are at war, and weather is being used as a weapon. And if Americans can't even consider that, then this is only going to accelerate, and we're going to see massive, massive amounts of fires, uh, massive amounts of destruction from fires, from flooding, and from, well, when they bring about the tornadoes and the hurricanes. and But I thought it was interesting because there was this article, um, FEMA unlikely to help after recent flooding. Hori leaders say, where will aid come from? Okay, if, if your county doesn't meet 
the uh, prescribed number, like one million or seven million, and I'm sure depending on the county, you know, though that figure will change. In uninsured lo losses from floods, you will not get any help. So, FEMA, with the massive, you know, uh, Harveys and Katrinas and all of the massive flooding of the farmland and, all right, FEMA steps in to help. Some of that help I'm going to show you is buying out whole towns, buying homes, and they buy them with the, the town or the states agreeing to purchase those homes for, you know, a minimal percentage, and then FEMA steps in with the whole amount to get to 100% on condition that no structures will be built in those areas. They raise all of the structures, all of the buildings, all of the homes, and they create green Greenland. This has been going on for a very, very long time. Years and years and years and years. With FEMA purchasing an awful lot of property from Americans. Pennies on the dollar. Because when you are flooded repeatedly, good luck selling that home. So FEMA steps in, buys it, and you're at a loss. And then they raise all those structures, bust them, take them down, destroy them. And never will there be any homes or buildings built on that property. This is a way in which they move people about. Where do you go? You go into the cities. If you need a job, where do people go? Well, they're going into areas that corporations have set up and they are uh, looking for, you know, employment, that they produce the employment for Americans. And I've already experienced it with people moving into South Carolina from the Northeast, like Maine, impoverished Maine. This man desperately needed a job he had to move his family down to Anderson, South Carolina, which is part of a mega region, uh, to get a job. He was so depressed. So depressed. But at least he could get a job and pay his bills and feed his family. Survival is not fun. Okay, so Horry County, with this recent flooding, they need uh, one million or more in uninsured losses from the floods, and South Carolina as a whole must have seven million or more in losses. And if they don't meet that criteria, then FEMA, you can forget about it. It's very unlikely that FEMA will come to your assistance. Just want to give you a heads up right now. Don't be thinking that FEMA will be coming to assist you. It's very unlikely. So all of those people who have flooded homes right now, they're not going to get assistance. So when they know that there is a criteria that these counties must meet, doesn't it make sense that FEMA will just you know, um, get the weather terrorists to flood smaller areas. All right, I've posted videos. FEMA buying out flooded homes. No rebuilding. Create green space in Agenda 2030, 2050 mega regions. Have you seen mainstream media posting more and more articles on more and more Americans. The percentage apparently is increasing. 
that want the country split into regions? Now, these percentages I don't believe, but it's part of the programming of Americans to get them to start thinking, okay, we're so divided now that we need to split up into regions. We, we just, we're, we're not united as the United States anymore. So, but that's all of the predictive programming of Americans where more and more will just go along with the plan to split the country into mega regions. If you don't know Agenda 2030, Agenda 2050, and a repost, okay, no links, um, but I have more. Okay, mega regions growing, Texas Triangle tops all. Americans easily moved, all planned in advance. America 2050, and here is your map. Oh, this is a different site. Okay, haven't been here for years, and it is a different site. Hang on. Okay, so <clears throat> here is your America 2050 map, mega regions. You got the Front Range, you got the Northern California and the Southern California and the Cascadia mega regions, Arizona Sun Corridor, Texas Triangle, Gulf Coast, Piedmont Atlantic, Florida, Northeast, and Great Lakes. And guess what? All of the area of this country that is not in one of the colored mega regions, they don't want people living in these areas. The whole of Montana. Hmm. That's not very good. Okay. So, um, one of the ways in which they bring about shifting the population from, let's say, South Dakota to a mega region, they depress South Dakota. They take away jobs from South Dakota. And then the corporations open up jobs in a mega region. And where do South Dakotans go? They go where the jobs are. If they don't kill themselves, kill themselves. And that is happening. And that's been happening for a long time. All of Maine. I think all of Maine, although mm, Portland probably is this circle. So, uh, if you want, and if you don't know anything about these mega regions and feel like learning something, um, you can listen to my videos. And the, the videos that I've not reposted because I got two channels taken down have links. The videos that I've reposted don't have links. But all of the articles, all of the documents are easy, easily accessible just by a search. Um, You can learn how FEMA is buying up a whole lot of territory. Now, I have other FEMA buyout videos on my channel, Weather Modification Playlist. All of this has never stopped. They've only accelerated the agenda. So many Trump supporters believe he got us out of the Paris Agreement, and that's it. All of the climate change action plans, that, that they just ceased to exist. You are, you couldn't be more wrong. You could not be more wrong. But before I get to how those climate action plans are still... Um, in the process, they're bringing about these mega regions. The mayors are very, very involved and have been involved even during the four years of Trump. But um, 
you know, this document, by the way, is America 2050, an infrastructure vision for 21st century America. We are changing. You may still be living in a bubble. You may still be living in your community. Don't really um, have any uh, knowledge about what's happening all over the country and all over the world to bring about these mega regions. So you feel like not much has changed? Oh, please come out of your bubble because an awful lot has changed. An awful, awful lot. Um, here, let me just get to the climate mayors. The climate mayors. Wow. Okay. Demonstrating leadership on climate change through meaningful actions in our communities. This has been going on. It went on throughout the Trump years. Now listen, mayors cannot implement an international treaty that has not been signed by the president and ratified by Congress. Oh, that's right. We no longer are the country um, operating with three branches of government and everything, everything has changed. Americans just love to live in their delusion thinking that, you know, how they are actually seeing our government operate is the way it's always operated? No. Wrong. And we've got treasonous pigs all over the country. And you know what? I, I feel guilty, you know, saying pigs because pigs are really wonderful animals and very intelligent. So just treasonous subhuman creatures Uh, More than 470 U.S. mayors demonstrating climate leadership through meaningful actions in their communities, representing 48 states, 74 uh, 74 million Americans, and they are putting together the climate action plans that Deborah Tavares is known for speaking about. Um, In fact, I had a subscribers send me this article. Partnership statement in response to Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner named Chair of Climate Mayors. Houston, the Texas Triangle. Your mayor is the head, is the chair of the climate mayors. Who was the head before the the chair? the mayor of Columbia, South Carolina. And they don't give a shit about you, Houstonians. These people are taking you down and you still listen to the horse shit that they, oh, I care so much about your health and I care so much about your home that has been flooded out and we're there to help you. Bullshit. Um, this, ugh, I, I have never liked this woman, Lena Hidalgo, Harris County judge, named to Time Magazine's 100 Next List. When you see these people who are, well, they get the coverage uh, from our mainstream media, and they are just sailing through. You know that these people are treasonous, they're all about themselves, and they will continue to destroy this country, to destroy Houston. And I can't believe how utterly naive Americans are, but they are so unbelievably ignorant, and that ignorant, well, they maintain it, they hold on to it, They are willfully ignorant to their own demise. They're killing off their own self. So yes, and Houston is to become home to the nation's largest urban solar farm. Yeah. Okay. What just happened in Texas? Now, a whole lot of those leftist... uh, morons believing in climate change have 
very little, a few of them know. Michael Moore, their documentary and sweetheart, Michael Moore. He did a documentary on, you know, those green, turning our world green. And he points out all of the very real problems with solar energy, but also points out that it's a scam. You might want to watch this. It's actually here, Planet of the Humans, full documentary on YouTube. You should watch this. It's eye-opening. Will the people on the blue team watch it? Probably not because they don't like to be, you know, disturbed. They love to be comfortable. They love, love, love to uh, pretend. They love their delusions. They love that consensus. They love listening to the lie because they don't have to do squat. Nothing. They don't have to change. They don't have to become involved. They just listen to the lies. And boy, these lies have been, you know, exposed, exposed, exposed. But we have mainstream media and we have big tech hiding the information on a regular basis now, getting rid of all of the documents and the evidence on all of their agendas from the Internet. It's getting harder and harder. You might want to download this documentary, Planet of the Humans. Hmm. Greed is bringing about the green world. Greed. The solar farms cause tremendous destruction to the earth. This guy is such a sick, twisted Bill McGiven, Mr. Climate Change. 350.org. You know, oh my God, it's so hard because there are so many holes, holes in all of this crap that they're pushing upon us, forcing upon, upon us. 350, you want to get down to, you know, that carbon number 350? Um, that carbon, carbon dioxide... Plants love it. The earth loves it. We love it. Um, the more carbon dioxide, the better we are. And they want to reduce it. They're killing life. All right. Wow, man. Curfew in effect for city of Beattyville, Kentucky. Now we have the National Guard. Now we have curfews being uh, implemented by city officials. This was not the country I grew up in, but they want Americans to get very used to the military being called out, curfews being set for anything. And you know, in that video that Deborah Tavares posted on the attack on our coastal uh, lines, she talks about the military takeover. You know, the Pentagon sees climate change as uh, the biggest national security threat. We're in such trouble because people still love their ignorance. Well, this is what is happening. Okay, so you see this area, the gray area along the coast here? Kiss your homes goodbye. If you've not experienced it yet, you will. This whole area, they want people out. They want people, all people out of the panhandle. You know, they, this is one of the mega regions here, which is the Gulf Coast mega region. But a whole lot of people are going to be destroyed in this region, if not killed off, 
they will be impoverished because this world that they are reshaping for their own sick, twisted pleasures, we will be their slaves and they will live in the luxury areas of the world. I don't, I, I can't believe that there's just like no way to get through to people, but 50 ways America is projected to change by 2050. This is really very interesting because this was an article back in 2018. So, um, about two and a quarter years. You will see a lot of this has come true. We'll travel between cities in a human propulsion network, a hyperloop. Oh, that train, that's right. That very fast train that will bring people from mega region to mega region, but only those who have gained permission to travel. Three times as many people. 33% they say American population will explode going from 329 million in 2018 to 438 million by 2015. Well, that's interesting because we have a fertility crisis and the American population is going down. Hmm. All those immigrants coming across and Biden has just opened up the borders again and boom, hundreds of thousands. Come on in. Well, that 33% change will largely, largely result from an influx of people into the country. <laughs> Immigrants arriving along with their descendants. Debt will nearly double or triple or even more. So hot, it's dangerous to go outside. It'll be made hot. It'll be the deliberate manufacture of higher temperatures because it's so easy for them to do with their weather modification tools. There will be many more elderly people. That's right, because infertility crisis means less people born, more people get old, and, well, the elderly are already experiencing the living on Social Security and not making it. The economy will lag behind China and India. That's already happening. A human colony on the moon, who knows? Uh, there will be even more women than men. There will be a rise of luxury cities that the slaves will not be able to afford. People of color will be the majority. Uh, more than 90% of the coral reefs will be gone. The U.S. military won't be the strongest anymore. Fewer Americans will be getting married. Twice as many people will ski. All right. Um, American homes will have heat and lights that will follow you around and spy on you. One third of Manhattan will be below sea level. Brought about deliberately. Latinos will be nearly a third of the population. U.S. workers will have superhuman robotic strength. U.S. workers will be replaced by robots. Um, fewer people will be completely uneducated. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Tall buildings will be miniature cities because you will walk everywhere. Driving cars is just, well, listen to Bill McGibbon. Get out of your cars. You're creating that climate change. Oh, my God. Colleges and high schools won't use textbooks anymore. Urban cities will eclipse rural areas. Self-driving cars will dominate American highways. America will be less religiously affiliated. Natural gas will be the main source of energy. <laughs> it will. You want to know why? Well, watch that documentary that Michael Moore did or produced, and you'll understand why. Natural gas, oh, you need it 
to create that solar, those solar, those wind uh, turbines, the solar farms, more than 40% of the population will be overweight. I think it's a higher percentage now. Spanish will be the most spoken language. New York City heat waves will triple. Instead of medical transplants, new organs will be grown. Salaries will decrease. U.S. astronauts will have landed on Mars or be close to it. Virtually all Americans will use the Internet. Freelance jobs will rule the workforce. 3D printing will be central in U.S. manufacturing. U.S. military submarines could be obsolete. Uh, Christian population will shrink as the Muslim population grows. Print newspapers will no longer exist. Wildfires in California will double. Politicians will cater more to minorities. And ain't they doing just that? Large families will be rare. Hospitals will have virtual doctors. Uh, nearly one in five people will be divorced. One in five. That's in 2018, recent numbers indicate that divorce rates are shrinking. That, I don't, well, whatever. Alzheimer's disease rates will triple. I guess it's from all of that aluminum that we're breathing, that we're eating, that we're drinking, and that we're, well, putting under our underarms. There won't be any truck drivers. One third of the country will have diabetes. Books will be almost gone. Power outages and blackouts will increase in cities. <laughs> oh boy, hardly anyone will die of cancer. Fast food restaurants will be run by robots. America will be on the brink of a mega drought. Okay, so as I am wont to do my lengthy videos, but this is where we're going. All of the weather modification, the weather used as a weapon, is to move people out of their areas and get those who actually survive into the mega cities. Why? Well, the mega cities will only have a certain amount of people, and in those mega cities, you will be surveilled 24 7. Every aspect of your life will be controlled. It's easier to control people that are in tight little regions, 5G controlling their movement, actually. And, um, well, it's much harder to control a big, big country where people have freedom and they can travel. No. You will have to ask permission to go anywhere outside of your mega region, perhaps even outside of your neighborhood, and you will be a slave. And those luxury cities, they will have gigantic walls up to protect them from all of us, the impoverished slave. We're in such trouble, it is un friggin' believable.